Oi, olá, hello. Meu nome é Mariana. My name is Mariana. Uh, and I'll do this in English. So, this is a recording because my internet just went down yesterday. I don't know if I can trust the stability of my phone's internet. So I've asked the organizers to record this to make sure that the talk won't be uh, interrupted. But I hope that um, I'm also there online uh, so that I can ask or answer questions that you might ask uh, at the end of the talk. Okay, so first, thank you so much uh, for the organizers to putting such a nice meeting together. Um, and I'm very uh, flattered to be invited for this symposium. So I'm a postdoc at Washington University in St. Louis, and I'm going to talk about phylogenetic reconstruction of ancestral butterfly plant networks. Um, so the work that I'm going to talk about has been done during my postdoc with Michael Landis in the US, but it started doing my PhD in Stockholm, Sweden. And um, these are the people that I've worked with for this project. Um, but before I moved to Sweden, I did my bachelor's and my master's at Universidade Federal do Paraná in Curitiba, Brazil. So, species in with intimate ecological interactions, such as parasites and mutualists, make up a large part of known biodiversity. And at least among parasites, there is a general pattern about the number of hosts used per species. As we can see in these three histograms of host range, which means um, the number of hosts used, uh, most species use one or a few hosts, but there's a long tail of, of generalists um, in all of these very different systems. And this variation in the number and the identity of the hosts used produces variation in the structure of the ecological network formed by all the interactions between two clades. So here we have four examples uh, of uh, different kinds of ecological networks, and then the color of the nodes show the two different clades. And these first two networks, they're quite disconnected or fragmented, while these two, C and D, um, in those networks, all uh, the nodes or connected directly or indirectly. And so that means that they respond to change in, in, in very, they behave in very different ways. So one question then is how these networks were formed, which evolutionary processes generated these properties we see today. In a paper in 2018, we simulated networks according to two scenarios of host associated diversification. Um, a variability scenario coming from the oscillation hypothesis and a radiation scenario coming from Ehrlich and Raven. And we showed that host shifts increased network modularity while host range expansions and recolonizations of ancestral hosts produced network nestedness. So by comparing empirical and simulated networks, we found that both of these scenarios, both the oscillation hypothesis and um, the escape and radiate seem to have contributed to, or processes that are compatible with these two different hypotheses, they seem to have contributed to um, butterfly diversification. But we were not able then to reconstruct historical butterfly plant interactions or ancestral networks. That was still not uh, possible. Because this is not a simple problem. Um, because the state space of a model um, increases drastically with the increasing number of hosts because we were not in only interested in the number of hosts per se, the host range, but the set of hosts used by each butterfly, which we call host repertoire. So we developed a model for inference of historical interactions that is implemented in RevBase. There's a tutorial in, in the RevBase website for those that are interested in applying for their own uh, data. And the two main features of the model are that species can use multiple hosts at any given time and that phylogenetic proximity between hosts can affect the relative probability of host gains, uh, meaning that um, 
we allow for the possibility that it's easier for the butterflies to colonize hosts they are closely related phylogenetically to hosts that they are used by the butterfly at that point in time. So this method allows us to reconstruct historical interactions uh, at internal nodes of the butterfly tree. So this this is a hypothetical butterfly tree with four tips. It's the same tree. Um, and then each vector here represents the host repertoire of, of um, the butterfly. And down here we have the, the phylogeny for um, uh, the relationship between the hosts. Doesn't really matter now. What I really want to show is that we can look at the, uh, the ancestral states at the internal nodes of the butterfly tree, or we can look at certain points in time during butterfly diversification and ask what was the um, what was the host that they were using then all right so now we'll get to to new results um, so this has been um, available as a preprint in bioarchive and today I got the email uh, saying that it's accepted in ecology letters so soon will be um, published uh, okay so for this study we assembled a data set for pieridae butterflies including 66 butterfly genera and um, 50 plant families it's not that they use 50 plants family, you'll see how the data looks like, but we, we decided to, to, to have a broad um, sampling across angiosperms. So that, and then we decided to, to take 50 plant families. Right, so this is what the extant network looks like. Uh, butterflies are in the rows here, the 66 genera and 50 butterfly, sorry, plant families are down here in the columns. And then each square represents an interaction, say, between this butterfly and this host plant. And the colors mean or show the modules. So modules are groups of nodes, both butterflies and plants, that interact more with each other than with the rest of the network. So for example, here we have a yellow module that yeah, concentrates these interactions between these butterflies and these host plants. But there are also interactions between modules. So gray squares represent those interactions between a butterfly and a plant that were assigned to different modules. So the first reconstruction we did was a traditional ancestral state reconstruction where um, for each internal node in the butterfly tree, we calculated the posterior probability for the interaction with each host and kept only um, those interactions with more than 0.9 posterior probability. And this is the result for this part. So here again is the extent in, or the extent interactions. On the bottom here, uh, is the plant phylogeny and on the left is butterfly phylogeny with the ancestral states on top. So each square here represents a plant family and they are colored by their module in the extant uh, network. So here we can see how um, the origin of the four main modules in this network and so yeah, that we start in the first module that's mainly um, um, formed by butterflies that feed on Fabaceae. Then we have a second module showing up and then a third and a fourth. And maybe the most interesting thing that we reconstructed in this analysis is that um, it was this host range expansion here uh, at the base of the Pyrena that were with high posterior probability using both um, Caparaceae, so the ancestral host in their case, 
uh, brassy casey and tropeo lacy so we reconstructed um, the use of three host uh, families which is a, a new thing that was um, trickier to to do this sort of reconstruction before this method all right but this is the more traditional reconstruction so I think the cooler one is the next one so we spend more time on the next one so the second approach we we use to reconstruct host repertoires for all extant lineages at different points in time instead of at the internal nodes and then we combined um, these interactions into networks for each time point and this way we can also choose a probability threshold uh, to include interactions into a summary network. So here are the summary networks we reconstructed from 80 million years ago on the top left, 70, 60, all the way to 10 million years ago. And here is the network uh, at present, so the extant network. So let's look at each one of them in more detail. So for each time point, we show the network and the butterfly tree with the extant butterflies at that time. The thickness of the edges, uh, showing the interactions between the, the nodes, um, are proportional to the posterior probability of that interaction. Circles are butterflies and squares are plants. And the colors still show modules, but now the modules uh, were identified for each network at each time point, and then were matched uh, across time points. So it could be that modules just disappeared and, and showed up again, or it can be that modules persist over time. Uh, so in the beginning of Pyarida diversification, Fabaceae was the most likely host, followed by Caparaceae or an ancestor of Caparaceae, most likely. At 60 million years ago, um, the two modules, the Fabaceae Caparaceae modules, are clearly separated, uh, one being formed by Fabaceae and basal pyarids, and the other uh, formed by Caparaceae and Pyrenae, that has just started diversifying. And by comparing networks at 60 and 50 million years ago, we can see that the pyrene diversified, increasing the size of the blue module. At 40 million years ago, Laurentaceae and Santalaceae were colonized by a host shift from Caparaceae and formed module 4, the yellow one. Um, two lineages colonized Brassicaceae, one also by a host shift from Caparaceae and another one by a host range expansion. And because most species in M3, the Brassicaceae module, retained Caparaceae as a host, modules M3 and M2 stayed connected. At 20 million years ago, the overall structure of the network changed. So the network increased with butterfly diversification and colonization of new hosts. But recolonization of ancestral hosts connected new modules to the older modules, connecting the whole network. So now instead of a disconnected network, fragmented network, we have a connected network where um, everyone, almost everyone, is connected directly or indirectly. And the same dynamics uh, continued um, at 10 million years ago and into the present. So, because it is really hard to calculate posterior probabilities for modules, there are, um, so it's as if we had to summarize um, different configurations of, of the same network. Uh, and that's, that's really hard. Uh, we, we haven't managed to do that yet. So we found another way to validate these modules in the summary networks that I just showed you. Uh, what we did was to calculate how often two pairs of nodes were assigned to the same module, regardless if butterfly or plant. 
Uh, so each matrix here contains all the butterflies and plants present at each time um, in the rows and the columns. So here we have 80 million years, 70, and all the way to 10 million years ago. And the more gray cells there are, the less robust the modules are. Uh, so we, we can see that it's only at 80 and 70 million years ago that the modules are not robust. Um, it's more likely that there was only one module back then. Uh, but overall, we're pretty confident in our reconstruction and it's expected that most uncertainty uh, is, is found in, in um, the deeper times. So the last thing we, we, we did was to look at how the structure of the network changed over time in terms of modularity and nastiness. And now we could get proper posterior distributions uh, because we're only looking at a number, an index. Uh, so what I'm showing here is the distribution of z-scores, meaning how much more or less uh, nestedness or nested or modular uh, each network is then expected by chance, given the size of the network. Um, and then we see that both modularity and nastiness were first detectable at 30 million years ago, uh, right here. And that means that the structure we see today in the extant network that we're showing here by this uh, black, these black dots, uh, this structure is not temporary and it's not a new thing. It's an evolutionarily stable structure that's been, um, that is detectable in at least uh, the last 30 million years. And this was um, really interesting for us. It's um, something that, one of those things that raises more questions than answers. Um, but that's, that's where, where we are now. Um, so to summarize, in this study, we provide the means to test ideas about evolution of ecological networks by further developing the two set for analysis of inferred ancestral interactions. And we showed its usage uh, by reconstructing ancestral pyridae angiosperm networks with the new um, probabilistic representation that makes fuller use of the posterior distribution of ancestral states. Um, and then again, this, the, these butterflies and plants, they are an example. These, this, these methods can be hopefully applied to, to a large, um, a wide range of, of different systems. And um, finally, we have previously proposed that host shifts increased network modularity and host range expansions and recolonizations of ancestral hosts produce network nestedness. But now we could reconstruct the specific host shifts and host range expansions and recolonizations that have shaped uh, the pyridae angiosperm network over time, creating an evolutionarily stable modular and nested structure. So with that, I would like to thank, again, the organizers, all of you for listening and um, my, my co-authors once again. Thank you. Obrigada. I hope I'm there and uh, then I can answer your questions. Thanks again.